Hello friends and uh, welcome to the video here. Today I'm going to be speaking about something that may trigger you because of movies, because of the way people have interpreted this word, the Ouija board or Ouija board or spirit board. Now a spirit board is just a tool um, enabling spirit to um, communicate through us, with us. So in the past sort of like 10 years, within the 10 years that I've experienced spirit boards, um, Ouija boards and stuff, it's not, I've, I've have used boards as such, however what we use is a table, a table with letters, with numbers, with a yes and a no. And this may be scary to people because people usually don't understand the importance of spirit tables and talking to spirit, talking to spirits, you know. And there's a whole vast array of different reasons why spirit boards are very powerful, very, you know, worth using. So I'm gonna break it down with my own experience where I've never experienced anything negative. Now, the spirit board was first founded in, in the Victorian times, you know, where, where rat wrappings and tappings of knocks and taps and mediums, um, where they would, where the, a medium would usually be present in a seance, in a table seance. And it's a form of communication. It's no different than using cards, than using divination, than using oracle cards, tarot cards, crystals, pendulums, um, or even seeing a medium. It's just you have to understand the main important thing, which is your spirit team. So, for first time people, if you're listening to this, watching to this, or, or, or first discovering about spirit tables and contact with guides and loved ones, all this is possible. But first, you must first understand and recognize the energies of your own spirit team. This is the underlining rule, really, that we promote in Circle Sitters. So our rule is that you sit for spirit regularly, once or twice a week, the same time every day or at once a week at the same time. And this is your dedication to spirit. And there needs to be at least two or three people present. You can do it on your own, but as a group, it, it, you know, a good size number is about about five, up to seven, no more. And this group needs to be a dedicated spirit team, you know, with the same intention, with, with no ego, with um, no reason to get popular or have, or have fame, but just in the spirit of love. Because everything that's attached to negativity, ego, it's all, it's all, it's, it's low vibrational stuff. So you have to ask yourself, why do you want to speak with spirit? Is it just because, oh, you're curious? Or is, is it you want to enhance your psychic and mediumship abilities, which the table can help you do so? But before you actually start doing table work, it's important to understand your own energies as a group collective of the people that are wanting to sit for spirit. So this is our rules in Circle Sitters here at Passing Side Retreat, Trance and Physical Mediumship Center. Of We really advise people to first understand their own energies with their own guides, with their own gatekeepers, their spirit team. Because right now with you, you listening to this, you have a non-physical friend, you have a guide, you have a mentor, a spiritual mentor in, in the spirit, uh, non-physical friends that are with us all the time, most times, not we're on the toilet, don't get scared, that are with us to help guide us spiritually in this life, for, for contact, for mediumship, for our own spiritual journey, whatever you do, you know, it doesn't matter what you do spiritually, everything is spiritual in nature, but our guides are there to help look after us with intuition, giving us warnings, our feelings, um, waking us up at certain times, you know, so we're not late, uh, being aware and not having accidents, um, being creative, 
uh, artwork, um, psychic art, giving mess- the, the list is endless. Everything that we do in nature is, is spiritual, you know, using your intuition. So we really advise people in sm- these small groups, like, you know, two, f- two, three, four, five, six, seven people in a circle, and you sit in lightened or darkened conditions, whatever you feel comfortable, have a candle, you know, just lit, it's, it's the energy of spirit, have some calming music, um, and it's important to have an opening prayer because then that sets the intention. And it's not like, oh, it's a, it's not like a, a fairy, fluffy sort of thing, you know, oh, please, you know, open up the, the energies. It's, it's setting the space, you're, you're having a prayer. Um, if you're religious, if you're connected to God, if you're not, it doesn't matter. It's just you. You can use the traditional um, the prayer. Um, excuse me, I've forgotten what it is. In, in our Father, in Thy name, everything, um, whatever you feel is comfortable. But how we usually do it is we usually start in a circle when everyone's sat down, everyone's ready. No one needs to go to the toilet. The lights are like dimmed or we have some light, light a candle, get the, get the music ready, have our water ready. It's important to have water to drink in the room. And then you're all ready, okay? And then it, it would be something like this. You close your eyes and then you say, like the circle leader of, of the group will start and, and say and explain, Dear Great Spirit, we welcome our energies here this evening um, to help us connect help us to to give love receive love and help those who need it in this time help connect us to our 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 abilities to make us more in tune and to give us some form of evidence of spirit Um, and this is another important thing that you didn't say is please keep us protected and keep all unwanted negative influences away from us at all times and only bring to us the love and light, those of the love and light. And then you can say Amen, Amen, or Namaste, or whatever you would like, whatever feels important or feels right. Then after that, if you are doing table work, if you are doing spirit, spirit board work, then you continue to raise the energy. But for first timers who, you know, haven't ever sat on a table and who are starting out and want to connect, and this is very important at these times, I filmed this in 2020, uh, the end of 2020, the time of the COVID times where people are probably very alone or they have small groups of friends or their family, you know, use this time to connect and to have a home circle. And this is what it is. It's a home circle of people your neighbors or or very close friends in your support bubble and um you know this is what's needed at these times so after you've done the opening prayer then just sit there just like hold the energy hold the space just really manifest and call upon spirit your guides and if you don't know your spirit guides or anybody think of people that have passed over into the light could be your grandfather your, your nan these are people that know you and you know them, so you can connect just by thinking about them. It could be pets that have passed over. It could be um, a feeling that you have when you're in meditation. Or if you don't meditate, call upon a deity, you know. Um, call upon a feeling of warmth or home and, and being secure and allowing the energy to, to raise. And then, you know, have your eyes open at times, but feel free to keep them closed, but just focus the energy on the center of the circle of the sitters, the circle sitters, you know, in the room. And when our circle first started, just heard something in the room. When our circle first started, nothing happened for a whole year. It was a long time before anything happened, any spirit, any contact. Then after a year, things started to happen. And then after a year and a quarter or so, then the spirit table started to to, to happen and occur. And then things started to pick up. But you first need to have that connection with spirit, which is very important. Having that connection with spirit is is the first thing. It's not the intention of sitting down and being on the spirit table. It's sitting 
for, for spirit and, and connecting. And once you have your spirit team, once you have those that you connect with spiritually, then you're able to then go deeper and go more serious because then you know you're protected. And when you first go on the table, you need to make sure that the same person comes through every time. It's not just a random person. And they'll start to connect with you. Just know that you're protected. Don't be scared. Don't attract that negativity. Be positive and be in love. And things will pick up and, and be good. So I hope this helps. Um, there are a lot of rules and many deeper things that I can tell you right now about spirit boards, about Ouija boards, um, spirit tables. But the main important thing is if you are thinking about doing this table work is to first, the main important thing is to have a dedicated sitting with people to know that they are dedicated and very serious, you know, in a very happy, positive, loving way, that they're going to sit with you, with the group, every week without fail. Sometimes there might be holidays or sickness, but you have to be committed. And that commitment of spirit is building the bridge between the physical, physical world and the spirit world, that they know that, okay, these group of people, they want, they want to connect and do great things. And if it is your purpose, whatever happens, it will, it will pick up. But persistence is the key. Dedication is the key. Love is the key. And without these things, communication doesn't happen. It takes time. It takes time to do. So thank you for watching. Um, keep the faith with yourself. Keep the love. And I'm sure that the, the, spirit, the spirits around you at these times will connect with you. There's nothing scary about um, spirit boards, Ouija boards, it's just how you do it and how well you know your spirit team around you. So thanks for watching, I'll speak to you again.